I recently had a viewer question about the relationship between statins and the occurrence of lupus. So that's this week's topic. Stay tuned. So here's the viewer question that I received. They were checked for lupus in 2008 and were told that they don't quite, I guess is the way to put it, don't quite have lupus. 15 years later, they had a, as they say here, a supposed heart attack. So I would have to ask why supposed? Was it uh, questionable whether it was actually a heart attack or not? And after 75 days of horrible muscle and joint pain, I was taken off the statin. And now I have every marker that lupus denotes. And is there a connection? Uh, they're asking that might push them over the edge. A reading between the lines here, I gather that they were put on a statin after the supposed heart attack and immediately started having adverse effects and went through pains for two and a half months. It's not absolutely obvious that that's the case, so that's why I'm a little hesitant here. I do have to give this warning. I'm not a medical professional, so this discussion is really not intended to be diagnostic in any way. It doesn't apply to any particular individual, but this viewer has raised the question and I think it's worth exploring. I'm gonna review some of the literature on it and we always have to be cognizant that these studies need follow-up and uh, anything that we see in a single study, we should consider tentative or hypothetical unless there's a lot more confirmation. Given that, that leads me to three questions. Can statins induce lupus and can it push a vulnerable patient over the edge? This is what our viewer has asked. And as I studied that, I had to ask, well, what's the relationship between lupus and cholesterol? Because whenever we're talking about statins, we're talking about cholesterol lowering. And then finally, should statins be used to treat patients with lupus? Before I go on though, I think I should answer the question, what is lupus? Its formal name is systemic lupus erythematosus. That is the last time I'm gonna call it by its full name in this video because I'll be tripping over my tongue the whole way. So whenever I am faced with some disease that I'm unfamiliar with, well, go to the national organizations and there is a lupus foundation in America. I mean, I've heard of lupus, but I wasn't real familiar with it. I don't know anybody personally who has lupus. Well, it's a chronic, meaning a long-term disease that can cause inflammation and pain in any part of your body. It's an autoimmune disease. Autoimmune diseases, it's when your body attacks itself. It attacks healthy tissue. Your autoimmune system is supposed to be attacking bad things. Well, with lupus, the autoimmune system is attacking good things. And you look at the graphic here, you can see some of the effects of this disease. It is not a disease to be taken lightly. I recommend that you go to the website and there are some videos of lupus patients describing what it's like. Apparently one of the more prominent outward signs of it is what's called this butterfly rash on the face. And if that's all it was, then okay, that's something that people would have to live with, have to deal with. But it's much more than that. When it's your own body attacking you internally, it is very difficult to live with, and I would consider it debilitating if you have a severe case. So the question, can statins induce lupus? Well, let's look at a couple papers in this first one entitled Lupus-like Syndrome Associated with Statin Therapy. And by the way, for a lot of these papers, I actually can't get to the real papers quite often. They're behind a paywall. I would go broke trying to buy all the academic research papers. So sometimes I have to be satisfied with just reading the abstract and sometimes a summary of the conclusion. So here they say an increasing number of lupus-like syndrome has recently been reported with these lipid lowering agents, in other words, statin. They go on to say that antibodies may persist for many months after drug discontinuation, so the causal relationship is therefore difficult to establish and probably many cases are unrecognized. And you notice they say lupus-like syndrome, and in this next paper we're going to look at, they use the same term, so we'll talk about that. The next paper, association between statin use and lupus-like syndrome using spontaneous reports. They mention that the results of this study suggest the use of statins may be associated with the occurrence of lupus-like syndrome, and that warrants the awareness of the possibility of developing lupus-like syndrome in patients treated with statins. Now, why do they say lupus-like syndrome? I believe it's because it's all the signs or very many of the markers for lupus when a person is on statins, but apparently once statins are discontinued, after a considerable amount of time, the symptoms can subside, which to me indicates that the patient maybe didn't actually have a permanent chronic case of lupus, but did have all the outward signs of it and they were induced by the statins. So what's the connection between lupus and cholesterol? I looked at the research from the New York University Winthrop Hospital's Biomedical Research Institute and they found that statins typically do slow down the production of cholesterol. That's pretty certain, 
But lupus patients have a different dilemma. They don't typically overproduce cholesterol. The problem is the macrophages of lupus patients, such as white blood cells, eat the cholesterol without appropriately processing it and shedding it. The cells get bloated and overloaded with cholesterol, not because of an overproduction of cholesterol, it's because the cells aren't able to process the cholesterol properly. And you see here in this graphic how they talk about that. In a normal case, the macrophage will take care of the cells that are ready to die normally, and they get cleared out by the macrophages. With somebody who's got chronic autoimmunity, that process breaks down. Next, I'd like to look at three papers about treating lupus patients with statins. The first one was titled The Effects of Statin Therapy in Patients with Lupus. And here they point out that the use of statins in lupus reduced the serum lipid and high sensitive C-reactive protein levels. Well, that's good. High sensitivity C-reactive protein or HSCRP is a marker of inflammation. So if that was reduced, that would tell us that, yeah, the statins are reducing inflammation, which is something we hear about them all the time. You know, they get these pleiotropic effects and they can reduce inflammation. But for our purposes here, the important thing is statins did not affect the SLE DAI score. That is basically the lupus disease activity index score. And you can see a calculator for that online. And therefore, their use for modifying SLE disease activity is not presently supported. So doctors should not consider statins as an appropriate treatment for somebody with lupus just because lupus has this cholesterol connection to it. The next paper, statins and lupus, However, these drugs, and they're talking about statins, have not only cholesterol-lowering properties, but also have immunomodulator effects, which may potentially trigger or aggravate autoimmune diseases. These immunomodulator effects are bad, and it'll happen potentially to any patient, but this kind of answers the question, can it trigger or aggravate lupus? This would indicate, yes, they actually could could either trigger it because somebody's kind of close and maybe this pushes them over the edge, which is actually the question we got from our viewer. And statin-induced lupus must therefore be considered in the diagnosis of lupus. The next paper, lupus and cholesterol levels, how are they related? Fairly recent study found that statins were ineffective as a standalone cholesterol treatment for people with lupus. Confirming what I said earlier, this appears to be primarily because the causes of high cholesterol are different in people with lupus than in people without lupus. What I gather from this is that treating lupus with statins as a, you know, oh, you have lupus, we should give you a statin because lupus is related to cholesterol, it seems to be the absolute wrong thing to do. And as in the case of our viewer, hypothetically, this could have triggered at least lupus-like syndrome. My hope for that viewer is that now that they're off the statins, that their markers for lupus will subside. Given that there must have been a suspicion 15 years earlier that they were close to the edge on lupus, this may actually have pushed them over the edge. Let's keep a positive thought and hope for them that getting off the statins, the symptoms will eventually subside. I have some closing thoughts on this that are highly speculative, and it's based on this data. These were, in many cases, very underpowered studies. You can see here that the 95% confidence intervals, those are the ones in parentheses, overlap the base case, the hazard ratio of 1.0. And that's basically tells us that these results would not be accepted as significant enough to say that it's 95% certain that these are the case. So we have to keep that in mind. So we see that people with past statin use have a higher risk of lupus than those who recently got off statins versus people who are currently on statins. What I gather from this sort of data is that statins are really a double-edged sword. And the analogy I make is let's think about a Boy Scout out camping. He's the statin. He lit a campfire, which is analogous to causing this autoimmune disease. He's also tending to it as a good little statin. I mean, as a good little Boy Scout, he's tending to the fire and making sure that things don't get out of control. Well, his friends come by and say, hey, leave the fire. We want to go swimming. So he just leaves. That is taking the person off statins. But the fire is still burning. Possibly it's going to burn itself out eventually and there'll be no problem or the sparks are flying everywhere and it lights something else somewhere else and the person ends up with full-fledged lupus. I don't know if this analogy is correct. If anybody out there watching this has some experience with it or any thoughts on it, I'd love to hear them. But that's the analogy that I draw. The statins are causing the problem and dealing with it at the same time. But if you're an unfortunate patient like the commenter who was clearly statin intolerant, they had a lot of muscle pain from it and just couldn't take the statins, well, they end up with the Boy Scout leaving the campfire, so to speak, and therefore have to deal with the consequences. So that's what I have on statins and lupus. 
If you appreciate this content, please like, share, subscribe, and comment on this topics or others you'd like me to cover. And if you haven't seen this video, I recommend you take a look at it now. Thanks for listening.